In today's video, we want to chat to you guys about six misconceptions about expat tax. My name is Heiner Gouwe, I'm from a company called SA Accounting Network, and... I'm Martin Vesenet, I'm from Tax Consulting South Africa. Yes, so I think obviously the purpose of the video is to talk about a couple of misconceptions when it comes to expat tax. And I think the first thing that I want to mention to you guys is, is a lot of people have the misconception that as soon as they get on a plane and they leave the country, that they never need to worry about uh, uh, submitting any tax returns again afterwards. And I think that's probably one of the biggest misconceptions. Sarsh, um, these days, especially since this year, we've seen a lot of penalties. As soon as you don't submit the tax return, they just start hitting you with penalties. And to get those penalties reversed is almost impossible. So remember, you still, as a resident or a tax resident in South Africa, you still need to declare your worldwide income. So I just want to remind you guys, and I want to encourage you guys, please make sure that you do your tax returns. Don't stop doing your returns once you're on, over the big bond. Second one. Yeah. Second um, misconception is if you go through the process of financial immigration that you are automatically a non-resident. So I just want to give some clarity in that regard. So prior to the legislature's changes and SAAB withdrawing from the process, there was two processes that needed to be followed. Um, you need to be, you need to seize a tax residency from a SAAS perspective and you need to be noted as an immigrant from a South African Reserve Bank perspective in terms of the banking and um, exchange control purposes. So the, there was two approval processes that aligned with each other and that was the correct financial immigration process that you needed to attend to both. You needed to attend to a SAAS side. Um, you can't go through that process if the SAAS side wasn't um, done. Um, so the term financial immigration is still used by our firm because it's still the once-off process to seize your tax residency by applying the ordinary resident test, which is the intention test, my intention to reside abroad permanently. So if you ever question if you went through the correct process, ask yourself did you get confirmation if, it was pro um, if you finalised the process um, prior to March 2021, did you get confirmation from a SAAB perspective, so from the South African Reserve Bank, which is the MP336B form, you need to get that form, and if you got confirmation from a SAAS perspective that you noted as a non-resident, which is that um, tax compliance status burden for immigration. Um, so that's the two documents, two documents that would have proved to you that you're non-resident. However, your, your status also needs to need to align now on SARS because they implemented the change. I, don't, I just want to touch on that as well. So, so uh, SARS non-resident confirmation letter, they have been issuing you that. So it's important to ensure that you get that letter and that your SARS profile reflects your status. It's not that you did the process incorrectly. The gold post was shifted against by SARS. So just get that letter, get it done, get that necessary letter as well. Mm. I think the next um, misconception that I want to chat about quickly is that that um, the residents and non non residents in South Africa are taxed the same, and I think that's one of the uh, the big misconceptions as well. If you are tax resident in South Africa, you have to declare your worldwide income. So it doesn't matter where your income is coming from, you have to declare it in South Africa. Obviously, if you're working overseas, you've got certain exemptions that you can deduct from your income before the amount becomes taxable. If you're non resident and you find a tax return as a non resident, that means that all your South African sourced income as well as going to get tax in South Africa. So there's quite a big difference. So I think it's really important to know where you stand in terms yeah. of your tax residence in South Africa as well. I 100% agree. And then the next misconception is that you can't become a non-resident if you're not a tax resident somewhere else or a citizen somewhere else. This is not the case. Remember, seizing your tax residency through the financial immigration or through the ordinary resident test, you, it's an objective assessment of intention. So if my intention is I want to reside abroad permanently. I can become a non-resident. It doesn't matter if I go to a country where there's no tax payable or I am a digital nomad. I'm just floating or traveling throughout the world, etc. Um, you can still seize your tax residency. The only time we will have to become a tax resident of another country is if you want to apply the double tax agreement, which is you cease to be a resident on an annual basis. So for that year of assessment, you need to prove to SARS you are a tax resident of that country where you're currently residing and that you are a tax resident in South Africa. And they apply the tiebreaker test to determine who has tax rights. That's where tax residency certificate and where you need to be a resident of the country um, comes into um, play. That's where you need to get it from a financial immigration per perspective or cessation perspective um, permanently through the ordinary resident test. You don't have to be a tax resident anywhere. You don't have to be a citizen anywhere. Um, it's a attention test. 
So if you're too long enough, you wouldn't need to pay tax? Yeah, that can be it. Okay, I think that's a good idea for everyone. <laughs> Let's go to it. Um, I think the next misconception is, especially last year we saw it on the tax returns, there was a little tick box that you could tick to say that I'm not, in, uh, well, but that it became a non-resident for tax purposes during the year. And I think that little box has caused so much confusing in the, uh, confusion in the tax world. And I think sadly to say that is not the case. If you tick the little box to say they're not resident in South Africa anymore for tax purposes, there's still a process that needs to be followed behind that. The whole process, we talked about it just now, it takes at least about three to eight months to go through the process of becoming a non-resident for tax purposes. So I think it's important for the guys to be aware of that. So that just taking the box, it doesn't, isn't enough. You have to go through the process and it's quite a formal process that you have to go through as well. And just to back, you also need to get confirmation from SARS. Mm. Um, ticking the box wouldn't give you confirmation. Yeah. Um, it's also great out now, but yeah. I agree. yeah. Another misconception? That SARS will never find me. And yeah, it's, there's so much global reporting going on, on there. Um, you mentioned it um, when you spoke about it later, third party um, collecting data that they need to report to SARS. And there's a global reporting standards as well where um, financial institutions um, across the world need to report to tax um, authorities, etc. Tax authorities in one country uh, report to each other. So, you can certainly try and put your head in the sand and oh, the SARS will never come and find it. Is that the correct approach? Certainly not. Get your affairs in order, get it compliant. That is the correct way to go. You have options. You, you, it's not necessary that you need to pay tax to SARS, but you need to do the correct thing. Mm -hmm. And that's the emphasis there. SARS can find you and they've taken steps and we've seen it um, a lot in the last couple. They really upped the game. Yeah, so I think those are just some of the misconceptions that we wanted to chat to you guys about. And I think the main thing about this thing is just to create awareness. If you guys do have maybe any issues or any questions that you've got or any help that you guys might need when it comes to, to your, your non-residency tax status and stuff like that, where can they get hold of you, Mark? So we have a, um, a website. Um, you can There's a contact form that you can fill in contact. Um, uh, the website is taxconsulting.co.za. You can also send me an email. My email address is martin at taxconsulting.co.za. You can also send me a WhatsApp or give me a call. My number is 084-418-3841. Um, so you can certainly um, get in contact with us. Our normal steps is we usually um, set up a free 30-minute consult where we discuss your situation in detail, advise you on the options available to you and which is the best route for you. Because um, not everyone's um, circumstances are the same, and not every option will suit um, every individual. It's, that's why we need to do our evaluation on you. Mm -hmm. So con come in contact, we can have that um, discussion, and we can, we can advise accordingly. Yeah. Thanks, Martin, for your time. Once again, once again, for the guys watching the video, remember just to give this video a like as well, and remember to subscribe to my channel, and keep your eyes out for the next one. Yeah. Thank you so much, Andrew. Thank you, everyone.